السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Okay, so basically how I became a Muslim It all started when I was in elementary school When I remember a couple of um, my friends were telling me about Islam um, They used to tell me about uh, the angels that wrote down your good and bad deeds they used to tell me about the Day of Judgment and etc. Um, years went by or whatever, and I years went by or whatever, and I tried myself to become more religious in my own religion, Christianity, but it really made no sense to me whatsoever. So um, I started to look more into Islam. In, in the in in secondary school, I remember two of my best friends. They it was one day it was library time and we went to the library to go read to go read books. And both of my sisters, um, they were reading the Quran. I approached these two sisters and I asked them if it would be possible if I could read the Quran with them. And they said, "Sure, you can read it." So then um, I read the English part of the Quran. I don't remember what surah and what ayah it was. I wish I did. But as soon as I read uh, that surah, um, my heart just felt, I don't know, the feeling in my heart was just so beautiful. So that's when I asked these sisters if um, I could be a Muslim. And ever since then, I uh, became a Muslim, alhamdulillah, they used to teach me about the Quran, they used to teach me about, they used to tell me more about Islam and stuff, and then I soon approached high school, and alhamdulillah, as soon as all the Muslims in the high school heard that, how I want to become a Muslim and how I'm embracing Islam as my religion, everybody started to help me out, alhamdulillah. I really like the hospitality that the Muslims give to newcomers into Islam. It's very beautiful. And as soon as I took, as soon as I became interested in to Islam, or as soon as I wanted to be a Muslim, Alhamdulillah, I started to see like things differently. Like, like everything just felt so like I don't know how to explain it. Well, it was just so I don't know. I just felt so pure and beautiful and. Oh, mashallah, I don't know. Islam is just so beautiful. I can't explain how amazing it is to, alhamdulillah, share this religion with a million of Muslims and a lot of reverts to have kind of like the same story as I, how we came to Islam and how we feel beautiful. Yes, alhamdulillah. Anywho, Jazakallah khairan for uh, listening to my story about uh, my revision to Islam. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May Allah forgive us for all of our sins and keep us guided on the straight path of Al Islam. Ameen. Okay, Jamila. Um, inshallah, let them know how you took your shahada last year. Alhamdulillah, at the masjid. And what happened right before that, and how old you were, and all that stuff. He left out a lot of stuff. Really, really good stuff, too. So, inshallah, take mic. 
Assalamu alaikum. Okay, how I took my shahada. Well, basically, it was um, November 27th of 2008, I believe it was. Um, and um, and uh, I don't know, I remember a lot of sisters. I invited them to come to take to come to my shahada it was pretty it was beautiful i was so excited for this and so were they so we approached we entered the masjid and it was me and this one sister in the wash and all the other sisters they went to i guess they went to sit in the the room just to wait for me um and it was just me and this one sister and i was very nervous to come out i felt i don't know i was just so nervous so many nerves were going through me subhanallah and then one of the sisters that were in the washroom with me, she said, don't worry, you feel like this because I, she told me how basically I feel like this because I feel you're just so excited to be, you know, taking your shahada for the first time, whatever. Because before I never really took my shahada, I kind of like took it to myself in a room, in my room, but I don't know. So I was very excited. So I came out. And she like she hyped me up, gave me you know a pep talk before uh, the sheikh and myself took the, my shahada. So um, she so as I entered the room or whatever, I just remember everybody having smile on their faces, and uh, it was just so amazing. I also remember <laughs> I also remember um, as soon as I got in there the shakh he was just asking me a lot of questions <laughs> questions I was like of um how long were you interested in Islam and ask me questions if what I knew about Islam and I basically told him I knew not that much because I don't know I was just I don't know it was just so overwhelming and then the best part when I took my Shahada was when he um when when was when he The best part was um, when he told me to repeat after himself and take the shahada. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And it was very, very, I don't, oh my goodness, I just couldn't, as soon as he was telling me to repeat after himself, I don't know, so like my heart, I just felt so amazing, like, oh my goodness, Allah, I can't explain the feeling. Anywho, after that, alhamdulillah, I was a Muslim, and here I am now, living a Muslim life, and live, trying to live everything uh, by, by this, you know, by Allah. Alhamdulillah. Anywho, jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, wa alaikum salam. Um, basically, like how she said, uh, mashallah, Sister Jamila, she took, well, she started becoming interested in Islam. Um, okay, she's messaging me right now on my son. But she basically um, started becoming interested in Islam when she was in grade 7. 
um, two girls, like, two girls started be making her interested in Islam by reading the Quran. Hold on. Sorry, one second. Um, so then she, after that, tell her to come back. Yeah, I'm trying to right now. Okay. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a very bad multitasker. But anyways, um, she was basically, she was very interested in Islam from then on. She was <laughs> basically she, from then on. She was um, looking into Islam from grade seven to grade twelve of high school, right? So once we were in grade twelve, um, she was still looking into Islam, and this was about we graduated in two thousand eight from high school, so that's like um, two years ago, right? So once we graduated, um, she was still looking into Islam. She was still practicing. Um, she wore hijab, alhamdulillah, and everything. Um, so then once we were done high school, I, everyone spoke to her, and I spoke to her, and a couple other sisters spoke to her and said um, that she should go and make shahada publicly because she made it by herself in her room, right? And she agreed, and then we went to the masjid one day, and subhanAllah, it was, I think, one of the most like beautiful, like it was like it was so beautiful, mashallah. Um, she said she's gonna come back, inshallah. She just has to restart her computer. But um, the whole situation was amazing. She was crying, alhamdulillah, and um, it was very emotional. Like everyone was very touched. Um, the sister, mashallah, she had she always had the best intention. You could just tell, you know, when somebody really loves Islam. Like I have never seen, well, I don't think I've ever seen somebody who loves Islam as much as the sister does. And I mean that sincerely, you know. Um, she always strived so hard to please Allah, and she's always she was always very caring. And Alhamdulillah, she's very, one of like a really close friend of mine, and I like she's one of my closest friends. And she loves Islam, and she works hard for it. And it's not easy when it comes to her family, but she still strives for it for the sake of Allah. Um, when it comes to her family, you were asking. You were asking about how her family took it. Is that what she wanted to know? Um, when her family first found out, she lives with her grandmother, right? So when her grandmother found out, her grandmother was pretty awkward because her family is very Christian. Um, they love their religion. They practice it. Nobody in her family is Muslim from what I know, um, like her immediate family. And so she started, she started practicing, and she would never wear hijab in front of her grandmother. As soon as she had to, like, as soon as she walked out, she out of the house, she would have to put it on, and when she came back from school, she would have to take it off. And this was pretty hard for her because she loved her dean and she loved Islam and she wanted to like, um, she wanted to be able to feel comfortable in front of her family. So we advised her and told her that you know you should tell your family and put your trust in Allah and inshallah everything will be fine. So alhamdulillah she did that. Her grandmother started feeling more comfortable with it um, once once time went by. And so she started. She was able to wear hijab in front of her grandmother. Alhamdulillah. And then, as time went by, her family was kind of awkward about it. Her sister, her younger sister, um, Alhamdulillah, was fine with it um, after a while. And then her little her little siblings loved Islam as well. They started catching on with it. At one point, I think they even were interested in becoming Muslim. But the awkward thing was that they lived with their mother, so. Um, obviously this segregated them, right? So, inshallah khair, but the sister, like I said, she loves Islam and every single day she strives to do better and mashallah, like her reversion story I think is one of the best. That's why I wanted her to say her story and sh like so people can take um, take something from this, you know, that alhamdulillah we're Muslims, you know, and was she going to an school or something? No, she went to uh, public school, but um, there was this one Lebanese sister and one Afghani sister, and they read. They, one actually, one was Shia, which was awkward. But one was Shia and one was Sunni. Um, but they're both really good friends. And actually, after that, she started giving dawah to the Shia sister, which was <laughs> awkward. But alhamdulillah. Um, but yeah, so she started giving dawah to the Shia sister. 
But wash, mashallah, the sister is, she's a really, really, really good sister. Yeah, it's ironic. Um, she's actually back on. One second. I'm going to invite her, inshallah. Okay, welcome back, Jamila. So, um, basically, I told them about part of your um, your story during the day that you took your shahada and after that, what happened after your shahada and so on. But inshallah, take, take mic and explain it better because obviously I don't know your life more than you do, <laughs> right? So inshallah, take mic. Assalamu alaikum. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <coughs> Anywho, so basically after I took my shahada that day, alhamdulillah, me and a couple of, me and a, a lot of the sisters, we, after that, we uh, went out to eat. And alhamdulillah, it was very nice. I don't know, I just felt so, like, beautiful. It was actually good, and alhamdulillah, I liked it. It's shawana. I found it to be a very, very filling. But anywho, but... Um, <laughs> anywho, um, before actually, before I took my shahada a while ago, as I was still practicing more and learning more about Islam, um, um, it was kind of hard to tell my family about me wanting to be a Muslim because I was nervous of how they would, um, of how they would, of how they would take, oh, their only grandbaby becoming a Muslim, oh my goodness, like, I don't know what they would expect. <clears throat> so, it was one time my grandparents and I think my cousin, he was there, and my sister, and we were just talking one day about um about schools in Toronto and how Toronto basically wanted to um, have an all black school. And then I brought up the uh, then I brought up uh, Islamic schools and how basically the government really doesn't fund Islamic Islamic schools and so on. And um, I told them. Um, it was hard, but it was kind of nerve-wracking too. But I told them, how would you feel if one of your daughters decided to, you know, be a Muslim? And my grandmother, you know, she's very smart, so she knows who I was talking about. And uh, I just had this, I think I had this big smile on my face. Oh, I really don't remember. but. I don't know, so she knew it was me, but regardless, she, uh, she's just like, well, I wouldn't, she told me how straight up she wouldn't be happy with the decision, but she said no matter what, she loved me regardless. So, alhamdulillah, just by that, I was just like, wow, you know, so I was like, wow, mashallah, okay, okay, my grandmother, you know, yeah, Nana Nizabam, I love her. Inshallah, may Allah put Islam in her heart. I mean, I mean. So, um, so after that, I remember a couple of times, like, we got, we came, we, we butt heads a lot of time. I guess she wasn't used to me being, being a Muslim, because I remember she's like, one thing, she, I remember when she told me, when I moved out, I can do whatever I want, basically, and, Basically, with Islam, I can be, a, I can revert to Islam. I can do this. I can do this. Basically, I didn't listen to her. I just, you know, became a Muslim when I wanted to and when I felt like I should be a Muslim. And then I remember one time Friday prayer, and I used to never wear the hijab until one time on Friday, because um, we usually have Friday buzz at our school. <coughs> And a sister told me, you know, just out of respect to wear it. And I'm like, oh, sure, why not? You know, I don't mind. Because I remember in grade 7 and 8, around there, I used to play with the hijab just for fun. My friends, you know, they would wear the hijab. So I walk out of the change room after gym, walk around with the hijab. I loved it. Anywho, um, it was grade 10. Um, 
before the Christmas holiday was when I told the sister, yeah, I'm going to wear the hijab for good. And ever since then, I put on the hijab and I just felt, I just felt so cool wearing the hijab. Like, I don't know, I felt like, I can't say this, it's just an amazing thing, I think. So, anywho, um, I used to always sneak out of my house and put on the hijab. Like, it was hard um, because, like, my grandmother, she didn't want me to go places at first with her when I wore the hijab. Like, I would, I would always used to wear a bandana and put my hood over my head. And I used to hide from my grandparents, make, sh make sure they never saw me leaving the house um, with the hijab. Well, they would leave to work earlier than I would, so I had enough time to put on the hijab, whatever. But there would be times when um, I wouldn't be able to leave the house with my hijab. I used to hide, put a bandana on my head, and I used to put a hood over my, my hair so nobody can see. And there would be this little alleyway I used to always go to, and I used to just slick on my hijab. And it was my grandmother and myself we would we would get into like more arguments pertaining I guess because of my uh, my change of religion and I understood you know because her first grandbaby you know I guess it's something scary it's something different um, <clears throat> so I remember one day um, I wrote a story actually about my reversion to Islam and I guess she found that, I guess she was in my room and she found all my, my books that I had about Islam and, um, I, and she also found, uh, the, the story I wrote. And, uh, I guess that kind of like, I'm not sure, Allah Alam, but I guess it like offended her and to her it felt like I was forcing the religion down her throat. I wasn't forcing the religion down her throat, I was just like i just thought like oh maybe if i just left this out on my dresser she would probably read it and inshallah you know her, she would feel her heart would feel warm to islam and probably take her shahada but you know inshallah allah has plans for everybody so inshallah khair, she becomes one but um she, um she talked to me about it and i don't know i felt bad because i'm like oh my goodness I didn't want to, I didn't want to feel like I was forcing anything down her throat. Anywho, later on, my family started me with the whole, we wanted to be a Muslim and stuff. I told my little sister everything. And mashallah, like she kept everything to herself. And like, I told her just to be with me 100% on this. And she, 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 she's, I knew like if I want to change my religion, she really wouldn't care. Because she's like, you know, basically, you know, what's if this is your choice, your decision, you feel happy, do it. So, I I pray that Allah for sure puts Islam into all my siblings' heart, inshallah, because like they were behind me with Islam 100%. Um, uh, I remember when my grandma, she actually caught me or started to find out that I was that I wore the hijab because she would see slowly but surely hijabs would be coming to my house i would be sneaking them hiding them in my school bags and whatnot and then until one day she actually knew i wore it for good i'm not sure if i told her out front but my 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 uh my grandmother she's a very smart woman mashallah so she she caught she caught on quite quick <laughs> anywho basically there was this <coughs> Uh, basically, there was this one time, uh, my grandmother, my sister, my grandfather, um, they all went out, and I was at home, and I guess me and my grandmother, we got into an argument prior them leaving the house, and when they left, I called them back, and I said, oh, okay, I, I would like to come uh, shopping with you guys, too. So it was an argument of, but you're not wearing the hijab when you're with me, that is the, just an argument about that. I'm like, okay. I hung up the phone. I'm like, regardless, I'm wearing the hijab whether you like it or not. 
Anywho, my grandmother came home and she looked very upset still. And um, she's like, and she came in and she asked me, are you coming? And I said, me, I just... I was just sick and tired of wearing a bandana and a hood over my head all the time. Like, what was the point of me even wearing a hijab in the first place if I'm going to do that? So, basically, I told her, like, I felt like, I don't know how I told her. I felt like I was rude. Allah Allah, but all I said was, she's like, are you coming? And I said, I'm not going to come if you're not going to let me wear the hijab. And when I said that, I felt so bad because I'm like, oh my goodness, I just spoke back to my grandmother. Am I supposed to, you know, respect respect her, you know? Because like, like you know, you're supposed to respect your mother and etc. So basically when I said that, her face just turned into madness, full rage madness. I thought, I don't know. I also thought she felt kind of heartbroken and uh, kind of like shocked that, oh my goodness, did, you, did the whole girl just, you know, talk back to me? But alhamdulillah, by uh, when it came to, <laughs> when it came to um, me being Muslim, I really didn't have it hard as some of the stories I heard of sisters who reverted to Islam. So alhamdulillah, like it was pretty easy the only things that we had were arguments stuff like that and me like basically lying about where i'm going like for example going to islamic lectures oh my goodness there were so many islamic lectures i used to lie basically all the time about it and then i, I remember i was at a sister's house one time and um her mother actually invited me to come over for uh Duxi for Quran uh, class that they had at their house. So I came and I asked uh, the Ma'alid a lot of questions if if it was, you know, haram for me or bad for me to lie. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. I asked him basically if it was <coughs> haram for me to lie or whatever. And he said, no, it's okay because like, I don't remember exactly what he said, but I remember he said it was okay because, like, uh, my family, they wouldn't understand, basically. So, I kept on telling them that, oh, I was going to so-and-so college or so-and-so university for this reason or whatever. Sooner or later, my grandma, she found, she caught on once again, and then I just started her telling her where I was going. Oh, it's an Islamic lecture, and she asked me about what. I was like, oh, it's about so-and-so, or it's about the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's about this, it's about this. And a couple of times, I remember me and her, we had little conversations about, like, Islam and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was pretty exciting, but it wasn't really hard. Um, it wasn't really hard for me being a Muslim in my house other than me wearing the hijab and me going out places with her wearing the, the full hijab as it not just the, the, the headscarf but the full covering the abaya, the hijab you know I get little remarks from my family oh you look like an old woman oh this and this and this you know so alhamdulillah but this most scary thing I thought, well not thought, but nerve-wracking was that, oh my goodness, um, when I go to visit my family, what will they think, you know? So it was hard for me because when I went um, to visit family and stuff like that, I never wore the hijab or anything. And I remember they used to ask me, um, so I hear you're being... A uh, I hear you're interested in Islam or I hear you're Muslim and I used to deny it because of because I wasn't ready because <coughs> I wasn't ready yet to tell them you know I didn't know uh, how to tell them what way or whatever so and I, if anybody should tell them uh, I was a Muslim was me and I kind of got upset as to uh, somebody say telling them that you know I'm a Muslim and stuff because I wanted to be the one to tell them it's it's my story and they should hear from from me the person who actually did it I figure so um, uh, one time 
what's it called there i was me and my sister we had the house to ourselves and my grandparents they went to go visit some family for a couple of days and um i guess my grandfather i was just talking about me and he told my family about me being a muslim so i kind of got upset because i'm just like oh my goodness why would he do that i wanted to tell i wanted to tell my grandparents in Toronto first as to why I wanted to be a Muslim. Anywho, so I got the courage a, a little while after to tell my grandparents that I became a Muslim. And I don't know, I was sh- in shock at what they told me. Basically, they just like, oh, well, you know, if this is what makes you happy, you know, this is like... They were just like beautiful like they were i guess happy for me especially when i told my one of my uncles and um when i told him uh, how i became like um i'm a muslim and all that stuff he's like that's really good he he says i respect that and whatever makes you happy makes me happy basically and that's what my grandmother said as well my grandmother other family and uh, they and my uncle he was actually telling me um, <clears throat> he was telling me how like it's good how Islam you know I like how Islam prohibits you and protects you like basically protects you from the evil and it strives you more to like you know the good and I like how and I think he mentioned something about the way how like the Muslim girls cover themselves by um, my other grandmother she really I don't know she really didn't like that you know she's like well i see other muslim girls that they wear the pants and that they wear their long tops and then i used to always say to myself well that's not me that and regardless i'm gonna you know wear what i want when it pertains to islam anywho basically i have the law i really never got anybody judging me when it came to islam and my family actually had the laws it was a beautiful thing I remember though when I went to visit my family one time that uh, I like out of the blue like straight up I just prayed in there in their house you know and I'm like wow (laughs) how did I get the the courage to do something like that I had to lie you know I was kind of used to it because I prayed at my house myself it was different from my family because during when they would call me to like when you're in your salah you have to be totally attentive when you're in your salah like you can't speak you can't break your salah in any type of way so when i used to pray salah they probably used to think i would uh i would be ignoring them but they caught on that you know and i also told them also too that during my salah like i can't like just come out of it if you call me like when I'm done, I'll, you know, I'll come to you, I'll help you with what you need, etc, etc. Anywho, basically, I prayed at my other grandparents' house, and I don't know how they, I don't know how they took it, like, how they took me praying, but I don't know if they did say anything to me. So, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, it was by, I had some down points, too, where one time i wanted to leave my house and i asked these sisters if i could live with them and whatever because like because like i guess the the arguments with my uh, grandparents were just getting out of control but alhamdulillah i remember every time when they used to talk about islam i used to always get on the defensive and when they used to say something especially my cousin and by Awawa. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I remember that I used to always, like one time they used to always make me cry of what the things they would say and make fun of me and I didn't like it. I say regardless of what you guys think, this religion is for me. I turned to this religion for a reason and I'm staying like this I'm staying in this religion forever alhamdulillah and oh my goodness I'm just telling you this right now I feel so good that basically they actually think it was a phase and I was just like
Okay, as I was saying, sorry about that. I had a computer problem. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't say I had a lot of struggles with me becoming a Muslim. Like, all well, I did, you know, the biggest struggle I would say was, um, the biggest test for me, I would say, was, I guess, when um, me wanting to move out of my house and live with another sister because I guess they thought I was going out too much and by me going out too much would probably go to a sister's house or go to the lectures or me just even wanting to go to the masjid like she would my grandmother you know she would let me alhamdulillah and any and when I used to get into a little arguments with my family pertaining to my religion um, she would always be the one to have my back regardless and I love her so much for that because because regardless I'm her grandbaby regardless and she loves me through thick and thin rain or storm you know so alhamdulillah and also I, kind, I felt so good being a Muslim too because like I remember um, my siblings and myself, we really don't, we don't live with each other. So when my three younger siblings would come over to visit um, the two oldest girls, which would be myself and my other sister, um, I used to always tell them to repeat um, Surah the fatiha with me, and they used to repeat it. And uh, I remember also too, my little brother, um, I remember one time, he was over and he used to always see me pray and I guess he would ask me why I would pray or no he asked me why I would always make my wudu before I pray and I would tell him okay this is wudu um, I wash myself before uh, before I uh, make salah it, um, when you do once you do your wudu it washes away all your sins etc etc and uh, I remember one time my brother he was just like Oh, he's like, Kiki, I want to pray with you. I'm like, okay, sure. You know, come along, come pray. I'm like, well, you have to make your wudu first. So he made his wudu, and mashallah, he came to pray with me. And yeah, it was just so cute, mashallah. After, I guess he's just like, okay, you know. But inshallah khair. I really hope he becomes a Muslim, and I pray that. I wish he lived with me more because, because, uh, because I guess, you know, me being that role model for him would have been really good but I remember another little boy his best friend and I consider his best friend my my brother as well they're, they're about the same age um, one is my brother's 10 and the other little boy just turned 9 uh, <clears throat> and I remember one time my mother she was actually seeing a Muslim man and I and um I guess with um, my two brothers, I guess he used to always tell them, I guess, about Islam and stuff like that, mashallah. And they were just like, oh, they came to me and they said, oh, I want to be a Muslim, I want to be a Muslim. And I'm like, oh, wow, mashallah, that's really good, you know. And I really did not know how to give da'wah to little kids or whatever, but I told them basically, you know, about you know a lot of stuff and i guess i taught i guess i was portraying a good muslim more through my actions than by words because like um i remember somebody saying um it's you can do uh, give da'wah through mouth but if people don't like you know don't want to hear it or whatever it's better to show through your actions so and then plus they're little kids i didn't want to like you know feel like i was boring them so you know i made things fun i would always pray salah in front of them you know and alhamdulillah they love that and the mother actually of my my uh, of my other brother i would like to say my brother's best friend she told me how well her little daughter she's a muslim but um she told me how she wouldn't mind both of her kids becoming a muslim so i was like wow Mashallah, that's really that's really good from a lady who is a non-Muslim to say for both of her children to be a Muslim. That's that's very good. But as I said, I really don't think I had many struggles as to um, me wearing the hijab and sneaking and putting it on, um, me wanting to, to move out and and yeah, that's.
oh, and, you know, little arguments here and there with my family about Islam. So, it wasn't, I don't remember having a lot of issues, actually. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I don't remember. But, I just think, alhamdulillah, this religion is so beautiful. And, and this religion is really the way of life, the way of being. Alhamdulillah, you understand you understand things a lot more. Like I remember when I was younger, and I used to go to church, and I used to go to the Sunday school classes, and they would tell me some things. For example, like for example, wearing a skirt. They would say, "Oh, you can't." And I remember saying this. Okay, so we can't. Basically, we can't show our skin because in the Old Testament, basically, you cannot like you know. The girls were supposed to wear hijabs when they entered into the churches. Um, like we weren't supposed to show our skin, you know. So I told, so I asked the, one of the, the Sunday school teachers. Okay, so we're not supposed to wear short skirts. We're supposed to wear wear long skirts. And I remember too because I used to also go to Spanish churches because my babysitter she was Spanish and she used to take us to Spanish churches. <laughs> And I remember the Spanish girls, uh, the young girls, they used to, um, especially this one girl, always wore a skirt. She never wore pants. So I'm just like, okay. I, I'm like, okay, I like this. I like this, you know. And then all of a sudden, I asked them more questions or whatever because I wanted to become more religious in Christianity before I wanted to be a Muslim. And then I remember the New Testament came when I was younger and I was like ha huh? New Testament since when was there new and I really never liked the New Testament personally because I'm like why are people you know changing the words of God you know and I remember one time I remember one time I used to cry a lot because like like I used to always I would used to always pray to God and be like oh my gosh you know like because I, I always wanted to be a religious, like just to be truthful to a, to my religion. And I used to one time I was I remember I was watching a uh, a Christian channel, <laughs> and they said something about I don't know I guess they used it as a metaphor Allah Alam, but I remember or I could I could be remembering this wrong, but I remember it said something like oh. Because they used to say, like, the Son of God. So when they said the Son of God, I used to figure, okay, the Son, you know, okay, Son, okay, I'll pray to the Son because it's my God, you know. So, like, I looked to, like, I knew there was, like, that one being. I knew that there was that one being and that one God, you know, but I didn't know of who. So I used to look at the stars, make a wish. I used to pray to, not pray to the sun, but look to the sun and be like, oh, oh God, you know, like, help me, whatever. And um, I remember one time I went to go visit family again. And my family, they're very religious when it comes to Christianity. So I went to the church with them, you know. And, uh, and, uh, like me, like me. I knew, like in my heart, that I was a, I wanted to be a Muslim for sure. But I um, but you know, at the time when I want, when I told when I told my friends yes I want to be a Muslim, my family other than the family that I lived with knew about to Muslim team about uh, about Islam. My family at the time really didn't know about me being a Muslim, so we went to the church. And as we stood up at the altar, I'm like, Astaghfirullah, my goodness, Allah. Like, I felt like this wasn't right. I couldn't, like, I shouldn't be, you know, go doing this or whatever, you know. But I still knew that, alhamdulillah, Allah was the one and only God and nobody can come, you know. There's no other God but Allah, you know. So when I was up at the altar, I felt bad and I remember I was crying because, like, I like I want to be religious more into Islam. Anywho, yeah. So alhamdulillah, everything is pretty easy now. I remember every I remember every Sunday, my my grandmother 
wait, she would say, wake up for church, wake up for church. And I used to fake an illness. And I used to fake, I used to fake sickness. I used to fake anything so I wouldn't go. And, uh, yeah, so she used to say, come, let's go wake up. And I used to say, oh, <coughs> no, I'm sick. I can't go today. Maybe next week. Maybe next week I'll go. And then I used to get forced next week. And then after, I'm just like, I'm like, well, when I'm a certain age, I'm not going to church anymore. And then, you know, but that was just jokes on my end. And I have to obey my grandmother because she my grandmother I don't play play with her regardless regardless of her being Muslim or not she's somebody you don't play play with so I would go to church yes I wouldn't you know like be about it about it what they would say but I would go to church whatever they really don't know play play I tell you so yeah but Alhamdulillah you know, everything is good, you know, my, my grandmother, everybody's used to me now, like, alhamdulillah, I remember one time, I think it was a couple of times, I walked out with her with a full hijab, but it was, it was beautiful, okay, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah, and it was actually one time in Halloween, when she wanted me to go shopping with her, and I came from school, and um and we and I went out with her in a full out abaya. I mean, I mean full out abaya. So it was pretty it was pretty solid. Me walking beside my grandmother with Abba, with full hijab on. It was, it was amazing. I'm like, Okay, this is what's up. I like this. So alhamdulillah. Anywho that's about it, I guess. Um, inshallah, may Allah, you know, forgive us of all of our sins and keep us guided into Islam and make us strong into our deen, inshallah. And uh, I, I mean, and I also pray that uh, Allah puts the love of Islam in my, uh, in my, my, my family's hearts, inshallah. I mean, I mean, jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.